giving up the ghosts. The dead neighbors run down the street. I recognize them anywhere, especially from the fourth floor. The thinning comb over, the tattered book bag from Barnes and Noble, his stooped rage muttering hate for anyone, not him. It was such a familiar sight that it took me a minute to remember he's dead. And I hadn't heard in months the waterfall of empty beer bottles flooding the recycling bin at the bottom of the ancient stairwell. Grief floods when you let go of all the hopes you packed into broken walls during the summer of 1976. You don't remember the boyfriends or the girlfriends or the multitude of roommates who stomped through decades of your life, only the bombs falling from other people's lips. Maybe he was trying to flood the abyss left by the accolades of the New York Times for his one and only bestseller, I say to my husband as he writes. You know, when he died, everyone remembered the promise of his greatness and how he made it into the great lady back then, still black and white. But I remember how a quiet morning always sounded like breaking glass. Success is not always a wonderful thing, my husband says to me, not looking up from his new words. Yeah, especially if you're a miserable son of a bitch to begin with, I say. Thinking about food we should eat later. His ferocious typing becomes a waterfall flooding into prettier walls. Success is not always a wonderful thing, my husband says, pounding away. How many years did you watch your dreams on different TVs of different rulings? Wide awake, exhausted, in the middle of the night, your roommate slept at better mornings. You dragged yourself to yet another way to pay the rent. Later, you bragged to new friends, I never hooked or sold drugs. Out of repaired walls that now defy decades of neglect, the big secondhand mirror beams. I peer in to see my new life finally free from all the memories they excavated with plaster and skin coating and eggshell white paint. Instead, I see her. The cemented grimace, the short gray hair, infuriated eyes, the lost chin every blood relative has. Their broken-hearted rage became her personal Vesuvius, burying her in bewilderment and the lane. I peer into that big new mirror, and it is clear, no matter how much weight I lose, my chin is never going to become chiseled enough to free me from frozen lava. <laughs> it is frustrating to live with such silent grimness, you finally tell me. It is frustrating and wearing. Life is short, you beg me. Life is short, and where's the girl who yelled at me on our first date? The few ghosts who still love me come back and sing and dance on my bedspread. Are you okay, Aunt Lil? Are you okay? I miss you so much. You were smart to die right before the intifada. We buried you, and a second later, your plans for peace were assassinated. Are you okay? You know, are you okay where you are? Is there peace there? Do they feed you enough? Grief floods when you finally let go of hope. My ghost should take my memories and go sing and dance someplace else. Perhaps on her bedspread, break her free from frozen lava with their stomping. Life is short. Life is short. And sometimes <laughs> success is a wonderful thing. A good meal under a new waterfall. Thank you.